Ace Podcast. You are listening to Crazy Town Podcast, Season 2, Episode 2, with Jonas, TNT Dynamite, Yo Yo, and special guest host, Chachmeyer. What's up? All right, before we start, guys, here's a quick fact. That is true, but it sounds like it isn't. Do you guys know that Betty White is actually older than sliced bread? <laughs> and I'd still hit it. Uh, she she was actually born in 1922, and the sliced bread machine wasn't invented until 1928. Oh, wait, the sliced bread machine wasn't invented, but they were slicing bread still, right? Yeah. Well, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> they sound no, medieval. Nobody ever, nobody ever sliced bread until there was a machine. <laughs> they just ate it loaf by loaf. They just put two loaves yeah. together. All right. <laughs> well, now that we've accomplished that, let's get this shit rolling. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Crazy Town Podcast. I'm your host, Jonas, and I'm here with TNT Dynamite. Say hello to everyone. What's up, everybody? TNT Dynamite here. TNT, D-I-N-O, and my G-H-T. Welcome back, dude. Ah, man, always glad to be back. All right, and making a triumphant return to the show for the fourth time, Chachmeyer. Say hello to everyone, sir. Hello, everyone. I'm the one to blame. You are, you are indeed the one to blame. <laughs> I gave him a standing ovation. Well, he deserves a standing ovation. Oh, he's... He does. I don't know what to say. He does. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we all want to thank you all for listening. Uh, if you aren't following us on Twitter, uh, do it, because if not, Grandma will not have you over for lunch tomorrow. It's at the Grandma. Crazy Town Pod. At the Crazy Town Pod. Um, and also the cornucopia of continuous info about the show, thecrazytown.com. So we do have a super duper show planned for you today. Chachmeyer is going to get a chance to get revenge on TNT and play a one on one rematch of Are You Urban a little later in the show. Are you ready for that, Chach? <laughs> oh, Jesus. You're going down. Uh, oh, he went down. <laughs> wow. Well, I can go with up. <laughs> well, he already went down, so I guess. I guess that's all you need to know. Uh, we will also discuss what unwritten rules of life should just be written down at this point. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk some crazy news stories, as we always do, and some other random things. But before we get to any of that today, guys, we do have some crazy town podcast fan things to deal with. Yay, fans! So, as we said... <laughs> In the last episode, and I want to re reiterate this, we want the fans of the show to get involved more than ever going forward. We want to be the most in fan-involved podcast there is out there. Isn't that right, guys? Yeah, we got yeah. some special things planned this season. Me and John, as we're talking about. Yeah. So send yeah. us emails or tweets with questions or comments, crazy news links, random topics, or even questions you want us to answer. Crazytownpodcast at gmail.com. We may just shout you out in a future episode. Also, remember, we have our brand new Crazy Town Podcast rant and rave voicemail line. Call and leave us a voicemail. If it's awesome, we might just play it on the show. So, Chachmire, maybe you should call into the voicemail line and leave us a voicemail. We'll play Ooh. it on the show. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chach, I'm going to have to ask you to sound more excited. God damn it. No, hold on. Let me. I, I need to fit that into my schedule. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. call and give us kudos. Tell us how much you hate your girlfriend. Or, or better yet, just call us when you're drunk instead of calling your ex. Now, you ready for the phone number? That's a good idea. Are you ready for the phone number? It's 512-TAX-1-NIP. T-A-X-1-NIP. One the number. N-I-P. N-I-P. Or, for all the people who don't want to spell Tax it out. One, 
Nip. Yes, it's 512-829-1647. That's the only fucking acronym I could come up with for for the phone number, so that's what you got. Tax one nip. Tax one nip. Right. It makes about as much sense as this show does. Right, exactly. So, so, but anyways, you know, hey, you, you know, give it a call. Maybe one day TNT or Jonas will be in the office and we'll, uh, we'll answer, we'll answer the phone for you. Instead of letting <laughs> you leave a voicemail. Or maybe, maybe our secretary will. Yeah, maybe they, the secretary will answer. Use the message. They call and you're like, hello. <laughs> 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 We're like, what Somebody's are you wearing? calling me? <laughs> what are you wearing? <laughs> Who is this? I'm fucking sleeping. It wakes me up. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> Anyways. Well, all right. To the, re- to the real fan stuff. Uh, I want to give a shout out to a fan. His name is Jimmy Evans from Las Vegas. He tweets us all the time. He doesn't say a lot. He gives us a hashtag. His uh, He's at NotFakeJimmy1 on Twitter. Just want to say thank you for listening, Jimmy, and keep the keep the tweets coming. We like them. But I do have a special fan mail that came in specifically for TNT Dynamite. They had a question for you. Oh, Jesus. Uh, this is from Shannon in Montana, of all places. Hey, we got people who listen in Montana. Nice. She writes, Dear Crazy Town Podcast, I was listening to Get to Know the Host episode, and TNT said he hasn't been to many concerts, but Outcast was his favorite. I live in Montana, so I don't get to see many concerts out here. But I saw Outcast in Denver on vacation in 2014, and they were my favorite too. I just wondered where and when TNT saw them, and what other music artists he would want to go see in concert if he had the chance. Wow. Uh, I don't remember the year, I guess, but I saw him in Cleveland. Like over there by where uh where's the comedy club? You know what I'm talking about downtown Cleveland. Did you go to the Gund? Gund Arena? Or No, it was the outdoor arena. Oh, Nautica. Nautica. Yeah, Nautica. it was Nautica. Okay. Alright. And yeah, then and then who there. would you want to go see if you had the chance? Like if you could go see a concert tomorrow, who would you go see? Honestly, I would probably wanna go see like this is going to sound terrible, but I am a millennial. So I guess I'd want to see Drake. <laughs> Only because, I mean, he's, he's, he's popping right now. He's pretty popular. I feel like it'd be a high energy show. I would know most of the songs because they're everywhere. And you're both on Twitter, so you're basically the same person. I think you said you yeah, were like Drake one time. We're both on Twitter, so, you know, I feel like we're really. No, like, seriously, like, <clears throat> like you would want to go see Queen. If you could go see any... No, no, no. I mean a legit person he could actually go see. Like, not just like oh, a person like forever. Yeah, like a, a legitimate, still-performing oh, yeah, artist. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason for the choice. That's the reason for the choice. I mean, the question was any. Who would you see, Jonas? If I could go see a concert tomorrow? Yeah, uh, anybody. Uh, I would probably lately I've been listening to a lot of Childish Gambino, so I guess I'd like to see him because he still performing before he stops doing music. I really hope he doesn't. So. Yeah, I think he is. But anyways, while we're on this topic, anyway, Chach, who? What is your favorite mm. concert you've ever been to, and where was it? Oh God, um, it's probably that's 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 that's, that's hard. <laughs> All right, one of the top five. Just someone okay. you really enjoyed. How about that? Because because like I went to Woodstock '99, so like then just say Wood, like, then just say Woodstock '99. Like, that's not one of my favorite. It's in there, but it's not like <laughs> the absolute. But, um, I love but that this hits guy. so many. You know what I mean? <laughs> I love this guy. I'd have to say it was a Between the Barry to Me concert, and it was in. I was in Cleveland. I don't remember where exactly it was. Right, but that's good enough. Well, Sh- Shannon just wanted to know a simple thing, and it, and she got a lot more than she asked for. So so I think yeah, we I think we covered that. We go above and beyond the Call of Duty here on the Crazy Town Podcast. Oh yeah, we absolutely do. So now it is time for another one of our new segments on the show: Learning with TNT Dynamite. Are you ready to give us some knowledge? Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> you, you're gonna play my music, right? <laughs> You oh, yeah. Play. Oh, yeah. We, we got it. We'll get, we'll get it going. So, all right. So, learning with TNT. Every episode, TNT Dynamite is going to teach us a brand new vocabulary word, since he's such a word nerd, and how to use it in a sentence properly. So, what's up for this one, TNT? What do you got? 
All right. Today's word with TNT Dynamite is phimosis. Can you spell that for the listeners? Absolutely. Phimosis is spelled P-H-I-M-O-S-I-S. Phimosis. It is a condition in which the tight foreskin cannot be pulled back over the head of the penis. (laughs) Can you use it in a sentence for us, please? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I sure can. Choshmeyer's dick was so riddled with phimosis that he couldn't get a steady stream, and it just dribbled out of his dick like... (laughs) Jesus Christ. Like a broken water fountain. (laughs) Wow. It's a real condition. It's a real condition. Wow. Jesus. Condition. Not for me, it's not. <laughs> no, not for you. Just ask me to use it hypothetically. Hey. hey, man. Hey, you used it. I mean, hypothetically, you got it. All right. Well, I'm about to wrap up this opening segment, and we'll get into the real part of the show here in a minute. But I do. I saw a joke online the other day that I wanted to read you guys because I thought it was actually kind of a pretty fucking clever joke. A family walks into the hotel, and the father says to the front desk at check-in, Hey, I hope the porn is disabled. The guy behind the desk replies, It's just regular porn, you sick fuck. (laughs) 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 That shit just made me chuckle, so... I don't know. Anyways, enough bullshit. Enough getting everything. We love our fans. We we love all you guys. Um, We'll be right back here on the Crazy Town Podcast in a second and get into the meat of the show. We'll be right back. Hey, this is Jeff Mack. And Cade. And we are from the Super Pee Pee Time Podcast, and you are listening to the Crazy Town Podcast. That's right, and smile at a waterfall. (laughs) (laughs) I would appreciate that. All right, and we are back on the Crazy Town Podcast with TNT Dynamite. And Chachmar, I have an article that a fan of the show sent me that they wanted uh, me to talk about, but I want to do a little bit of backstory on it first. Naturally. Yeah. The guy's name is Andy. He's from Los Angeles. He sent me this article, so I want to say thanks to Andy for sending me an article to talk about on the show. So, uh, first off, the man that I want to talk about is Abraham Shakespeare. Wow, two historic names combined. <laughs> right? Right, and that legitimately is this dude's real name. And uh, he's actually from Florida. Go figure. Oh, God. <laughs> that, that makes more sense. So, as you know, anything from Florida we talk about on the show, like the crazy fucking bridesmaid and all that other stuff, this, show's, this show, this, this article is pretty crazy. So, the backstory on Abraham Shakespeare. He was a regular man. He happened to stop at the store one day and had a buddy go in and buy $2 worth of lottery tickets with the $5 he had on him. Uh-huh. So he, uh, you know, they stopped, they were working or some shit, they were driving, and he's, and they stopped off the freeway in a small town to buy, like, a drink and some smokes. So he, he took two bucks, he bought some tickets. He and won, he won a billion dollars. He, he won $30 million. Yeah, good for him, dude. Right, right. So he he ended up taking the seventeen million dollar cash option. You know that you never probably. get you know, all the taxes and whatever. Yeah, probably wouldn't have took that myself. I think you have to pick up front if you're going to take the payments. Yeah, but, but if it's like half of your money, dude, I'm probably going to take the, the annuities. Yeah, I mean, if you could get like like I was thinking about that because the Powerball was just like seven hundred fucking million dollars. Yeah. You know, if you took the cash, like if you if you take the yearly payments, mm. um, you know, you know that it would be like you'd get like a few million dollars a year for like 30 years. Like Yeah. I mean, yeah. Think, like why would you need 700 million up front? I mean, like I'd be cool with like 500,000 up front. You know what I mean? Exactly. I think that could last me to the next year. What about you, Chach? Could you think 500,000 could last you the next year when you get 500 more thousand? Yeah. Definitely. Once you got money like that coming in, you're buying everything on credit anyway. Well, you're right. good for it. I mean, if you invest it, you're getting return on investment, so you don't even really need the money that's coming in every year, but whatever. Yeah. So, as with most lotto winners, his life began to fall apart. <laughs> oh, man. The first thing that happens to him 
The guy who actually bought the ticket for him ends up suing him. I knew it. Yes. Saying, well, okay, the guy, okay, the guy went to Shakespeare and said, dude, I just want a million dollars. And the guy wouldn't give him a million dollars. So then he tried to sue him, saying that, she, but he was, started lying and saying Shakespeare stole it out of his wallet and all this other stuff. I think if the dude would have sued him and just said, I'm the one who physically bought the ticket for him, they may have legitimately gave him a million dollars. Yeah. You should have just gave him a million for buying the ticket. Right. So, so I mean, I wanted to ask both of you, how do you feel about that? Like, if you like, obviously, if Shakespeare would have got out of the car himself and walked in and bought the ticket, and he was with someone, I mean that that is what it is. But this other person technically bought the ticket, and now Shakespeare said he gave him the two dollars like as soon as he got in the car. He's like, "Here's the two bucks for the ticket," and you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, <laughs> but do you think they? I mean, like, man, that's a weird situation because technically the other guy bought the ticket. Chuch. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, you know, me, me personally, if if you got, if one of you two bought a ticket for me and I won seventeen million dollars, congratulations, you just earned yourself two million dollars at least, at least. Well, right. I mean, like, cause if it wasn't for us going in for you, you wouldn't have the damn ticket anyway. Exactly. But even if it was like someone I didn't even know, I was just like on a trip carpooling and. John fucking Smith went in and bought the ticket and gave it to me and I gave him two bucks, I would feel obliged to at least give him a little bit of money. Exactly. And most of the time people hook up the uh the clerk or the uh the attendant, the cashier that sells him the ticket. That that cashier gets a, a, a usually gets a piece. I don't know if it's necessarily the person who won or maybe the uh the a lot of a lot of themselves. The yeah, so I know the back. store gets money, but I, I know damn well if I went and bought a ticket and I won, I would go back to the store and probably at least give the girl who sold me the ticket, like, pay off her car or something. You know what I mean? At the very least. Oh, yeah. You know, like, hey, you sold me this ticket. You really didn't do shit but hit a button, but congratulations. You you got a little bit lucky, too. See, I'm like that. That's the way that's, – that's how I believe. That person was the one that sold me the ticket, so that person gets a cut. Right, I'm not saying they should get half or whatever. You yeah, know what spread, I mean? spread the wealth, man. Yeah. That's like that movie with Nicolas Cage where, like, he uh, he t- he tips Ghost the waitress. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he becomes a flaming skulled superhero <laughs> when he wins the lottery. Well, like, like I I hit uh, 500 the other day or a couple weeks ago on an instant ticket. I went back and I gave the girl 50 bucks. Oh, nice. Was she surprised as fuck? Oh yeah. That's awesome. But when I used to sell lottery, people do that. Did she offer to give you an HJ for the fifty dollars? <laughs> <laughs> Did she say I'm not that type of girl? <laughs> yeah, you go, in, <laughs> you go in and hand her fifty, and she goes, "Oh, I don't, I'm not that type of girl." <laughs> <laughs> no, she was stunned, but yeah. you know. Well, I mean, shit, right. that's probably the coolest thing that's ever happened to her. Yeah, yeah, 50 bucks, 50 bucks. So anyway, so that was just the first part of the story. So he won the court case because obviously the dude went at, about it a shady way, saying that Shakespeare stole the ticket and blah, 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 and it was obviously a lie. <clears throat> After that happens, he he moves out of his normal neighborhood and into, like, a gated community because, I mean, at that point, once people know you have money, you can't just live, like, on, like, Main Street anymore. You know what I mean? You have to, like, get yeah. yeah. Be protected. So and why would you want to anyway? Well, right, exactly. So what it said in the article about this guy, not the article Andy sent me, uh, this dude didn't really make a lot of major purchases. It said that he bought like a million dollar house, he bought an Acura, and he bought a Rolex from a pawn shop. So, <laughs> so other than that, he didn't really buy a lot of things. But then in 2009, I, th- I think he won this in 2008, I think, something like that. In 2009, he disappears. Dun, dun, dun. I smell foul play. Whoa, yes. There is a, he had a business associate who, I, I don't remember her real name, it's not really, it's not really relevant, but she went by Dee Dee. So I'm totally going to refer to her as Baby D for the rest of this story. <laughs> That's a murder <laughs> name. That's a murder name. Right. So, but this dude, dude guys, this woman was a shyster. So here, here's the timeline of event. The fuck is a shyster? 
You've never heard what a shyster is? It's like a it's like a con man, a trickster, a, a no good rapscallion. Is that is that Jewish in origin? A shyster? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I or don't know. German? Ooh, it could Ooh. be German. It, it's not. It's not Scheisenster. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> all right. So she was a grifter. She was yes. Yeah, she was a grifter. She was a con man. Con woman. Con, con woman. Person. Con person. <laughs> Dude, who knows? She could be like Uncle Hussein, and be, pre- <laughs> and be pretending. If you want to know who Uncle Hussein is, check out season one of the Crazy Town podcast. I believe episode uh, 16, 17? Listen to them both. Maybe even if you find out that Jonas is related to Saddam Hussein. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> this whole relationship started. Um, she she didn't obviously didn't know him before he won the lotto. Go figure on that, right? Of course not. <clears throat> yeah. She uh she reaches out to him in October of two thousand eight and befriends him by saying she wants to write a book about him. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, I don't think I've heard the story before, but yeah, keep going. Yeah, you probably have. It was a pretty big deal back when it happened. By January 2009, his million-dollar home is transferred into the name of her company. It was called American Ripoff Incorporated. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it was called uh, American Medical Professionals, LLC. And somehow, with all of this, she ended up gaining control of his money as well. Oh, man. <clears throat> so basically, this dude was probably just like a pushover snowflake beta... God. Yeah, was he, like, super old? A oh, beta. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously he was just a dumb cuck. <laughs> God, I love that word. I do, too, man. It's, like, my new favorite word. Um, so anyway, I might do that next, learning with dynamite. We but no, just did it was, now. Anyway. Was he super old? He, was, he, he wasn't, like, super old. His picture, he looked, he looked kind of old, but he wasn't, like, 70. But anyways, or, I mean, that's the moot point. So yeah. she gains control of his money. Uh, she ends up buying her boyfriend a brand new Camaro and herself a brand new Hummer by March. So nice. then, then <laughs> in April, Not suspicious at all, right, right. Then in April, Abraham Shakespeare goes missing. I wonder who was responsible. <laughs> <laughs> but We're so, cool, so he, he, here's where it gets kind of weird. Like it's kind of, kind of. Crazy. Uh, uh-huh. So during the investigation, they go and talk to, to Baby D, and she tells the <laughs> cops that he decided to leave town because everyone was asking him for money. Which, oh I mean, yeah. Okay. She, legit. She's the only one she told. Right. Exactly. Well, <laughs> here, here, here's what she says: He's either gone to Texas, or Jamaica, or Puerto Rico, or Orlando, or he was sick in the hospital. What? <laughs> Wait a minute. It said that she listed like five different places or said he was in the hospital. That's a wide array of places. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I mean, I'll t- as I get into how crazy this lady is, you'll you'll see she wasn't a very smart person. Anyways, they end up finding Shakespeare buried under a patio she had built for her boyfriend. <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> <laughs> so he was dead. Right. They found him dead under her patio. But oh, um geez. no, but but throughout this investigation, at different points, she blamed drug dealers for killing him. She oh. blamed a lawyer. Oh yeah. She even at one point blamed her own fourteen year old son. Wow, what a dirty, dirty woman. <laughs> right. And then later she even said she was the one who did it, but she did it in self-defense. <laughs> so which of those options would you have picked, Josh? Which, which, which ones would you have said? <clears throat> That's what this is going to turn into? <laughs> That's where you're going with this? Yeah, I want to know how you – would you have said drug dealers did it, that a lawyer did it, your own 14-year-old child, or that you did it in self-defense? Yeah, Josh, would you blame your children? <laughs> <laughs> Papa Chach Papa Chach Pizza Yeah My my litter I want to blame the drug dealers it's myself I'm on the kids though That's kind of I mean that tells you how fucked Oh wait till I get to what else this lady did You guys no, This lady more. was a piece of shit Like There's 100% more. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's I'll a say, lot more. I probably go with drug dealers Drug dealers Yeah, yeah. I mean too That's probably the safest But uh So I was just curious That really had nothing to do With what I want to talk about I was just curious What you would do In that situation After this dude was dead She kept living in his house Oh okay 
she was actually using his cell phone to text his relatives as though she was him, so they didn't think he was living. But she must not have known Shakespeare too well, because this was a red flag to his family. Can you have any idea why um, her texting him as Abraham was a red flag to his family? Uh, because he didn't text anybody? He was illiterate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't read or write, so all of a sudden he's a texting machine after he's dead. Typical for most Floridians, actually, so yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry to all of our Florida listeners. <laughs> oh, so... So, yeah, so this dude, he wins the fucking lottery from $2. He can't even read the newspaper. Wow. I wonder if he could even read the numbers. Well, can illiterate people read numbers? I mean, I would think so. I don't don't know. I would think they can read numbers. Those are relatively easy. I mean, math is like the universal language, right? I mean, letters are relatively easy. Well, yeah, but not if you're illiterate. I don't think I don't think literacy is like an on off button. You can either read or you can't. I think he just probably couldn't read very well. That's yeah, that's what true. It is. it's not like he looked at words and were like, "What is this shit?" And then next yeah, day he's like, like "Oh, words. kidnapped." I, I know what that means. <laughs> yeah. During this investigation, they also found out that Baby D offered one of Shakespeare's sons a two hundred thousand dollar home to say that she saw him recently, or that oh. he saw him recently. She also gave someone $5,000 to give his mother a birthday card from Shakespeare so she would think he was alive. Wow. Dirty. And then here's probably the most fucked up thing about this lady that I, that that they found out. They found out during the investigation that previously in her life, uh, Baby D was about to have a car repoed. You know, which sucks, you know, someone's going to come take your car because you haven't paid the bill. Obviously, you aren't paying the bill, so you're in a bad spot, period. So she killed a salesman. (laughs) No, no, no. (laughs) I mean, that's just crazy. She did what, like, a normal person would do. She had someone store the car in the garage and then pretended she was kidnapped, sexually assaulted, and carjacked. Oh. Okay, yeah. She taped taped her own wrists. And threw herself into the trunk of someone's car. <laughs> I wish I could uh, see that. Do we have video footage of that? Yeah, right. And, <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> and she even went as far to having a rape kit done on her to prove oh. she, she was sexually wow. assaulted. Wow. Okay. Best part about this, she pleaded no contest to all of that and only got probation. Oh. Fucking well, sh- probation, guys. Where, that, where that's it. it. I just, it's people like that that just give the human race a bad name, man, you know? Right, right, right. Well, needless to say, she was convicted of murder, and she's serving yeah. life in prison without the possibility of Oh, murder. thank God. Right, right, <laughs> Get that right. woman off the fucking streets. Yeah, no shit, dude. She's just 100% piece of shit, like, to the bone. Right. Okay, now that was the backstory. <laughs> What, there's more? <laughs> that was that was just giving you premise to what Abraham Shakespeare was. I was on this emotional roller coaster, dude, and he's still hitting me with info. Right, right. No, no, no. Uh, now here's the story that Andy sent me about the sto- about about this relatively. So the girlfriend that Shakespeare had when he died, his real actual girlfriend, mm-hmm. she just won a million dollars off a scratch off ticket. Nice, good for her. Yeah, but what it said about this lady, here's the part that was kind of weird about it. She she wrote, or she, when they interviewed about it, she didn't write it. When She said she spends $100 a day on the lottery normally. Where the fuck is this bitch getting three grand a month to spend on the lottery? $100 a day? Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe she has a really good job. Yeah, playing the lotto. Now. <laughs> hey, yeah, I mean. If you spend a hundred dollars a day on the lotto, you're guaranteed to come out with maybe a quarter of your money. Yeah, in the it depends on what you're playing, but yes. Well, I think she played scratch offs. Yeah, the twenty dollars yeah. scratch off cards. Well, what, but yeah. what she said was the day that she won this million dollars, she only played twenty dollars that day, and it won her a million. Mm. So mm. now she has seven hundred and seventy thousand dollars from a scratch off. Hey, that's a nice little come up. So what do you guys think of that story, man? Isn't that crazy? 
Oh, oh God! That's good. I thought you were going to go even further. Like she came up dead. <laughs> Next thing you know, she was training dolphins <laughs> to speak English in the, in the Bahamas. I know, man. I can't take much more. Yeah, no, that, that, uh, that was it about that. But the shit that humans do to each other, man, especially for money, crazy. I know, right? It's just insane. So, but th- I mean, that's all there is to that story. Um, I think we're going to take a quick break. Chosh, are you ready to come back and challenge TNT for the RU Urban Crown? I don't know if it's much of a challenge. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's like it's like I'm Floyd Mayweather and he's Conor McGregor. Oh, get ready, yeah. get ready to go down just like he did weeks ago. Chosh. Oh wow! Yeah. I would say just like he did. I would weeks say you ago. got that backwards, but just that's like another he did weeks ago. Oh shit! <laughs> yes, yes, a few weeks ago. Yes. Oh shit! All right. Well, we will be right back and we'll get into a. One on one rematch of Are You Urban? Done. <laughs> the Crazy Town Podcast. Hello, this is Dylan and Reed from Just Dudes Being Guys. And you're about to enter Crazy Town on the Ace Podcast Network. Oh, banana, you disgust me. Oh, banana, you're not right. Oh, banana, you are mushy because you're no longer right. Oh, banana, turn to And we are back on the Crazy Town podcast for the matchup of the century, folks. It's the, <laughs> it, it is the one. Play Eye of the Tiger. I, dun, 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 dun. Okay. It is a rematch. If you listen to episode 18 of season one, we did a trial run of our new game called Are You Urban? It was uh, Chachmeyer versus TNT Dynamite. And we also had Sid and Jess of the Beard Five podcast, which you can find. At the Beardy Five on Twitter. Great podcast. Love those guys. So anyways, <clears throat> how Are You Urban works is it's an urban dictionary based game. I will ask the guys a question and it will either be the, the word itself and they have to give me the definition or I will give them the definition and they have to give me the word. Now, mind you, this is all from some random asshole on urban dictionary. So it really could be anything in the world. If the first person misses the question, the second person gets a chance to answer. The first person would get one point. If the second person gets it, they get two. If either person gets the question right, I pick someone who I thought had a better answer, and they get one pity point from me. Do you guys remember? you guys think you're good? Yeah. All right. Let's let's go. All right. Uh, Chachmar, since you're the the challenger, uh, pick a number between one and ten. Seven. Dynamite, pick a number. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pick number eight. All right, the number was six. So, Chachmar, do you want to go first, or do you want to go second on the on the with getting asked questions? I'll go second. Go second. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> All right. See TNT, what I'm up against here. TNT Dynamite. <laughs> There's going to yep. be, okay, guys, there's going to be six words that have the de- the word, and you have to give me a definition. There's going to be four that I'm going to give you the definition, you have to give me the word. There's ten total questions, and then whoever has most points wins. This first one is, I'm giving you the word. This was right. submitted by Mandel Hater on July 1st, <laughs> 2003. TNT Dynamite, what is, or what are, Mandel's? Mandels. Mandels. Can I have the spelling of that? M-A-N-D-A-L-S. Mandels. Mandels are the act of wearing sandals with socks, similar to the way a dad would wear his sandals. And Damn it! <laughs> All right, that was wrong. I'm going to go with, like, a fatty part of the body that can be grabbed onto like a love handle. <laughs> oh, actually, you're both wrong. Was, but but I, I like Chacha's answer better. But TNT's <laughs> answer was closer to what the actual answer is. A mandal yeah. is a man sandal that consists of brown or black leather that covers more than fifty percent of the foot. Fifty mm. percent of the foot. It's like those. It's not a flip flop. It's like the sandal that covers like the entire front end of the sh- of the. Uh, of the foot? So it's like a, like a slip-on. Kind of ah. like a slip-on sand, yes. All right. Ah. Yes. So, all right. So, points to uh, TNT Dynamite. One, Chachmire, zero. 
Next word. Damn it. Chachmeyer, what is hacks? H-A-X. It was submitted by Sloppy Joe on August 16th, 2005. <laughs> I would, I'm, um, instantly I'm going to go with, like, chop. Like hacks and chop. Like chopping something? As in, like, chopping? Yes. Okay. No, that's that's not right. I, I didn't think so, but that, that's immediately where I went. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> hey, where's your buzzer last round? I, I, I missed it last round. <laughs> yeah, um, of course. All right, give me give me the word one more time. Hacks. H A X. Hacks. That is a special bit of programming that goes into games, and which give you the upper hand against your opponent. As like as in hacking a game. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that is incorrect as well. The act, the actual answer is <laughs> by Sloppy Joe is when someone has an unfair advantage over you. What? What the hell, dude? <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Take that up with Sloppy Joe. Don't take that up with Jonas. That was really, really close, though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I am going to have to give you a close point on that one again, because you're actually somewhat <laughs> close. Is. So two to nothing. Josh Meyer, there's a lot of time to come back. <laughs> I know, man. I'm rusty, Josh. Just wait until I get this rust off, and then it's fucking game over. All right, Let's TNT. Are I'll you ready? Ah, yeah, I'm ready. All right, this is one where I'm going to give you the definition, and you have to give me the word. Easy every day. <laughs> the act. Okay, well, let me tell you. It's that the user was I hate bad music on January twenty fifth, two thousand nine. Uh -huh. The act of having a penis inserted your ear is called. Oh, <laughs> it's the uh, it's the meat tip. No, not the Q tip. The sausage Q tip. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the uh, a penis inserted to your ear. Is, uh, you can hear me coming. <laughs> you can hear me coming. <laughs> is that what, yeah. is that yeah, what it is? Let me give you the let me hear you coming, girl. Can you use that in a <laughs> sentence? Um, could you put your dick in my ear so I can hear you coming? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That, no, that, that's incorrect. <laughs> yes. All right. Chachmar? I almost want to say, like, a wet willy. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I'm, 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 I'm going to give Chachmar the point, for the pity point, but no, you both you both got it wrong. The The actual word is broken side. What the wait, fuck? Wait. B R O K E N C Y D E. The act of having a penis inserted into your ear. That doesn't even make sense. But all right. Uh, hey, you know, when we're dealing with Urban Dictionary, we're not looking for sense. Right, exactly. All right. Even... All right, Chachmar, same, same okay. thing. Uh, this, th okay, this was submitted by Depelmischer on April 24th, 2003. <laughs> Good old Depelmischer. Now, let me give you guys a preface on this one. There is a vast variety of words that could be correct. I'm looking for this particular word. So if you don't get it, I'm going with whoever gives me the best answer. The right. definition is a derogatory term used to sum up the existence of a worthless asshole. God. Oh. The secondary definition, a penis. <laughs> what was the first definition again? <laughs> <laughs> A derogatory term used to sum up the existence of a worthless asshole. Now there's a there's uh, a little bit there's a little bit of a hard of a hard point here, Chuck, because this person is an asshole and a penis at the exact same time. Yeah. Right. right. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you hear it, you're gonna be like, Oh, that fits. That's very yeah, that's actually it. All right, Chachma, are you ready? Got something for that just, me? That just, that just makes me want to say like dickhead. It it isn't dickhead. Okay. But, but TNT? Uh, wow. Well, with what I brought forward with them being an asshole and a dick at the same time, is it Bumbaclot? <laughs> <laughs> pity, point, pity point for you, but no. The answer we were looking for is 
prick. God, oh, shit. Uh, that prick okay. stole my girlfriend. That was, makes was, sense. was the example sentence. So it does make sense. Yeah, it does. All right, <clears throat> all right. So this one is TNT. The word, it's a word, you gotta give me the definition. Well, it's a phrase. Right. It was submitted by Carmano, September 18th, 2010. Okay. What is reaching Pretty on a hard. double? Reaching on a double. Hmm. <clears throat> Can I get the, uh, the country of origin? Uh, no. America. Okay, good. That helps. That helps actually. <laughs> reaching, reaching on a double. Um, is that the act of coming up behind your girlfriend and grabbing both breasts with full palmed hands? <laughs> no, reaching that, on a double. That is incorrect. Fuck. Shashmar? I like that, though. I like that, though. Yeah, um, hey, I try. It's either that or testicles, Chuch. It's, well, <laughs> if you got a double, it, it sounds like... Like you're about to double your money, like you're gambling. Like, Ooh. Ooh. Oh, okay. okay. I like I like the sound of that, but it is incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> I will give I'll give the pity point to TNT just because he talked about tits. Yeah, tits are always win, Chachi. See? Oh, no, it's, it's, All right. The actual definition, good. according to Carmano, it's uh, getting too ambitious with a girl after getting the second base, and then subsequently getting denied when trying to reach for third base. Oh. oh okay. See, Chach, I'm, I'm in the ballpark, Chach. You gotta get yeah, in the ballpark. Right. In my that's defense, key, the three points I've given right him are all there because he's like generally in the area oh, of the correct definition. Yeah, I'm in the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kachmeyer, here we go. What Keep is, I should say, this <laughs> This was submitted by Muffin Queen on September 11th, 2004. What is, or should I say, who is Stoner Claws? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> who is Stoner Claws? Yes. One I actually fucking know, finally. Is he like a Santa Claus that comes like the night before 420? <laughs> that is actually motherfucking correct. That is fucking <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I don't have a correct sound. <laughs> I know. I'll go ding, 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 ding. All right. It says every year on 419. Of course I got that right. Yeah. yeah. Every, <laughs> the definition is every year on 419, Stoner Claus travels to young stoners' homes and fills their empty Altoids tins with weed, ready for when they wake up on 420. <laughs> The Altoids. <laughs> I love the details. And then in the <laughs> sentence, the sentence is, "Mommy, how come Stoner Claus always gives me less weed than he gives Johnny?" <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! All right, so the score now is four for Three TNT times. and two for Trash. <laughs> so it's anybody's game still. We still got four words left to go. All right, this is another right. one where I'm gonna give you the the answer, and then. Uh, you give me the word or the phrase. This was submitted by your mom on March 29th, 2003. Shout out to my mom. Uh, <laughs> the, the, uh, the, 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 the definition is what you say in response to any question. Wow. Okay. Uh, what you say in response to any question. Uh, whatever they want to hear. Uh, and Is that right? No, buzz it. Buzz it. I'm... All right, Chachma. I didn't want to. Uh, if you get this right, you'll tie. <laughs> yeah, you good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Repeat, please. What you say in response to any question. I'm going to go with the word what. <laughs> <laughs> I used to say that to my wife all the time, so I'll give you the pity point for that. Say that that's something you go, what? Like you don't know what they said, right. but that is wrong. You hear right. noise? Coming. What? You guys are gonna, you guys are gonna kick yourself. This was submitted Damn, by your mom on March 29, 2003. What do you say in response to any question? Your mom. Ah! <laughs> the answer was in the username. Wow. Uh, all right, it's four to three. Trashmeyer, you, like have, you have a chance. You have a chance to, to tie it up. Uh, here's the word. What is 
Stir Crazy. Stir Crazy? It was submitted uh, by Max Zilla on April 12, 2005. Max Zilla. God, Stir Crazy? Uh Uh-huh. I would probably go for the more literal definition. Be like, I don't know, kind of like that, like, when you're watching a movie and somebody, like, falls in love, they're, like, stir crazy. Is that what it is? That is incorrect. Incorrect, okay. TNT. I would, for I the didn't speed, expect it. For two points. <clears throat> All right, stir crazy. This is, uh, this is obviously the act of spending far too many, <clears throat> far too much money at the local Starbucks, <laughs> <laughs> the point. Just buzz it. Just buzz it. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> Just, I'm cutting you off. You're about to get ridiculous. Not, um, not Starbucks. All right. I will. It's not Starbucks, and I fucking hate Starbucks. So I'm gonna give the point to fucking Chachmeyer. You guys are tied. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Two questions left. And it's pity is on my side. It's come down. It comes down to these two. Rigged. TNT Dynamite. What is this? Was this? This was submitted by Head on November 29th, two thousand three. I love Head. Who doesn't love Head? Fucking love it. Holy shit! Any of our if any of our listeners want to send me Head. Actually, I want to hear from any of our listeners that don't like Head. Yeah, I don't think that exists. <laughs> right? I don't think that All right, does. here we go. What I is so. one hitter quitter? Oh, God. <clears throat> All right, well, we're going to give go him an easy one. one. I, they're yeah, random. I mixed them up randomly, man. You got, <laughs> you got, you got stoner claws. <laughs> it's a bit of a layup. <clears throat> uh, one hitter quitter is a strain of marijuana that is so potent that it is thought to be one hit is enough to get one high. That is correct. The, what he ah. says, what he says, was a way to describe some bomb ass chronic. Yeah, would you? Come on, <laughs> you know. He like, says it's, his it's sentence probably... is, "Let's go blaze some of that one hit or quitter shit." <laughs> they should probably come to me to write these definitions, man. I don't know what these people are. All right. Here we All go. Right, Chuck. It's five to four. Last question. Chachmar, was, this was submitted by Caesar on July 19th, 2009. What is Saucin? Saucin? Yes, Saucin. Can you spell it? S A U C I N. Um, is that when you're like spiking a drink? I'm saucing, I'm saucing, I'm saucing on you. That's my that, shot. My <laughs> shot. Sorry. That's that's actually incorrect. Buzz it. <laughs> oh shit! Oh god! Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice professional integrity there, sir. <laughs> yeah. All right, TNT. You got to come up with a good one because if I give. Uh, Chachmar the pity point, you'll be tied. So you better come up with something good. I always, I always, I got, I got a point, didn't I? It's five to four, but there's a pity point to be given. Oh, okay. Jeez, I better, I should just get it right then. Um, saucin. This is an actual, an actual slang term. And it's spelled S A. Is there an apostrophe at the end? Because this is important. Not li- not listed here, but it very well it very well could be the uh, because that means that it's it's actually this is important. Sauc- it's saucing when when punctuation actually becomes important. In well, slime. from what I understand from my, <laughs> from the songs that I've heard, the term saucing um, <laughs> it is a way of flaunting in, in in a way that almost exude exudes one swag. And own personal confidence in thine self, and uh, projecting that onto the the people who are noticing, watching, or jealous of one's own inherent swag. So to you know sauce- what 
I, I'm going I'm to I'm gonna give that to you. You're pretty fucking close. The, the actual definition is saucin is when you're just the flyest of the fly or whatever you have is fly. I'm saucin. I'm saucin. I'm, come on, man. That was an easy one, too. All right. Well, the final <laughs> score. Touchy handshake, man. You you came out swinging. He did, man. Up until, <laughs> he, was, he was in until the end. You know, what, I, what, I, what, I, what I realized from this game is I need to have 11 questions from here on out just in case there's a tie. There's a tie, yeah. Yeah, so I'll, the final score. Yeah, seven, I always have an odd number. Seven to four. So TNT Dynamite is now two and O oh, all right. time. Chachi, uh, you are you are you are a great, a, a great what, opponent. Was, was, was there any say. doubt? Was there any doubt? <laughs> You had TNT, a bunch of chance. T- TNT, tell me tell me there near the end you weren't a little worried. He may pull that shit out. I was a little worried until you gave me those two layups at the end. Hey, man, <laughs> it's just how the cookies crumble, dude. I randomly put these together. I randomly put them in stacks. I, I let Chachmire yeah. pick whether he wanted first or second. Yeah. I mean, you so if he would have went first, he, he yeah, fucking he, put it in. He, he would have had, if, if, if uh, Chachmire would have went first, he would have been the one that had one hitter quitter. So That's true. You know, the guy so. smiled on me this day. Did, question, though. Did did you know what Saucin was prior to looking it up? If someone would have asked me what Saucin is, uh, I probably would not have got it, no. No? I, no. Challenge, you to, I challenge you to listen to some Post Malone. Right? Post Malone? Well, you just sang me the song. I think I got it now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Saucin, I'm Saucin, I'm Saucin. <laughs> Oh my God! You have the voice of an angel. <laughs> I know. I, I gotta get well, everybody. Look out! The the Jonas mixtape coming this spring. Oh, oh shit! It's bringing the fire. Where's the where's the <laughs> the fucking the fucking fog, yeah the foghorn. Oh shit! Foghorn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the air horn. Yeah, 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 that's where I was getting. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was looking for. So, all right, guys. Well, we're going to go ahead and take a break real quick. We're going to come right back. We're going to talk about uh, unwritten rules of life that should pretty much be, just be written down at this point, and we will be right back. All right, everybody, I know I said we'd be right back, but I realized that we recorded a full episode already. So, surprise, surprise, episode 2.5, next week, continuation with Chachmire, but for today, that's all the time we have. TNT Dynamite, why don't you say goodbye to everybody for the for the short term till next week? All right, uh, TNT Dynamite, find me on the uh, YouTube, just go there and look for me. I'm probably not there, but look anyway. Uh, I'm also on the Twitter, uh, you, you know, I'm basically Taylor Swift, so. You are very similar to Taylor Swift. Yeah, yeah, me and her have a, a similar singing voice. <laughs> oh, I was talking about <laughs> your preteen following. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> locked I was up, thinking you meant his book. So, you know. so yeah, he, he is pretty. Him and if I put, if you put them two next to each other, I wouldn't be able to tell them apart. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty pretty rough. All right, and Chachmire, thanks again for coming. We're gonna keep you on for the next uh, next part here, and uh, why don't you tell everybody uh, whatever you gotta say? Thank you uh, all for putting up with me. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I guess that's the way, one way to put it, right? Anyways, thank you so much for listening, everybody. If you uh, aren't following us on Twitter, it's at the Crazy Town Pod. The cornucopia of continuous information about the show is thecrazytown.com. Uh, review us on iTunes. Uh, tell me what you hate about the show. Tell me what you love about the show. Anyways, we will be back with a special episode next week, episode two point five with Chachmire. But for now, we are. Out. over.